From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. A British survey has found that playing the bagpipes can damage your health and your love life. We suspected as much all along. A scientist in Transylvania has come up with a new artificial blood. Vampires are already arguing over whether it tastes great or is less filling. Research finds that horses remember faces, they remember friends, have excellent memories, and can remember complex problem-solving strategies for 10 years or more. So if President Trump runs out of human beings willing to be in his cabinet, he can start interviewing candidates at Churchill Downs. You can pluck it, you can dye it, but you can't beat it. Gray hair is genetic. That's the word from an international group of researchers who have identified the first gene linked with gray hair, called IRF4. A team at University College London conducted a genetic analysis of more than 6,000 Latin Americans of mixed ancestry to prove that genes determine if your hair will turn gray or not. This particular group was chosen because of its extreme diversity. The study said we already know several genes involved in balding and hair color, but this is the first time a gene for graying has been identified in humans, as well as other genes influencing hair shape and density. So if you are going gray and you're upset about it, you can yell at your mother. One in five people surveyed would have sex with a robot. Uh, well, the, the robot from Lost in Space? Or maybe R2-D2? How about data from Star Trek? Ooh, maybe the robot made from the Jetsons. <sighs> President Trump would like to create a new branch of the military, the Space Force. And it'll get started as soon as he can locate his first choice for Space Force commander, Buzz Lightyear. A writer and doctor of psychology, Anna Konnikova, was writing a book on poker, but she got so good at winning that she's put the book itself on hold. <laughs> yeah, I can relate. I was going to write a book on procrastination, but I just never could get around to it. What's an extra inch in height worth? Well, a study found that it could mean up to $800 a year in extra income. Researchers found that tall people tend to earn more money and win more respect at work. They found a height advantage even in jobs where being tall isn't a qualification. In other words, they didn't just look at pro basketball players. Some good news for the non-tall, the researchers also said that being short doesn't appear to be a prohibitive disadvantage. Hard work, motivation, and intelligence help bridge the gap. But I guess taller means more money, though? So this is exactly why I'm going to grow my hair longer, so I can have a man bun. The Toronto Star reports that Donald Trump has made 1,486 false statements so far since becoming president. But to put that into perspective, that's really only 92 false statements per month, or just about three a day, so really not a big deal. The study says two-thirds of public school eighth graders are not proficient in math and literacy. What, whatever the words proficient and literacy mean. In South Carolina, a 75-year-old man was arrested for shoplifting two bottles of wine, gourmet mushrooms, and hummus at a supermarket. When a deputy asked the man why he didn't pay for the items, he said he did not realize that he had to. Th does that excuse normally work for you, mister? If so, I would start shopping at the Lexus dealership. According to research, our brains get rid of their waste while we sleep. In a related story, a majority of Congress suffers from insomnia. At a Salvation Army store in Keysboro, Australia, a young man went inside to shop and left his $1,000 bicycle just inside the front of the store after asking permission from the attendant to do so. Apparently not everybody got the memo, though. Before he left, his prized Fuji road bike was sold by two volunteers, not realizing it was not a donation. Best part, it was sold for just 20 bucks. Meanwhile, the store has put out a plea to try and get the bike back and they're trying their best to compensate the customer. United Airlines has banned 50 types of dogs and cats from flights after several animal-related incidents. And if you don't like their new policy, they'll beat the tar out of you and drag you off the plane. Stick around, there's more weird news to come. Twice a year, I take a single week and ask you to join me in saving lives. Well, this week, you can save a child's life in Haiti or Guatemala for a single gift of just $50. That one-time gift of $50 to Food for the Poor 
will provide a full year of food and clean water for life for that child as it gives the child and their family the resources to filter the water for drinking. If you'd like to do more, a one-time gift of $250 will provide the same for an entire family of five. I've supported Food for the Poor for several years now because I believe in what they do, and I hope you will support them now as well. You can give online by clicking the Give Life banner at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com or click the link in the show notes. And if you'd rather give by phone, you can call 855-901-4673. That's 855-901-HOPE. Or in your mobile phone, you can dial pound 250 and say the keyword donate. Please make that one-time gift of $50 this week and bring them food, clean water, and most of all, hope and life. In Anchorage, Alaska, a blockbuster video store – yes, a blockbuster video store – has been trying to increase store traffic by putting on a display of a jockstrap once worn by actor Russell Crowe in the 2008 movie Cinderella Man. The jockstrap has a kind of strange history. It recently became part of a celebrity auction, which Crowe has dubbed the Divorce Auction, where it caught the eye of the host of HBO's Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Oliver purchased the jockstrap and some other items and sent them to Anchorage, which has one of the last remaining big-box store video chains. The video store is trying to stave off streaming movie services, which are gaining popularity as more broadband capability comes to the nation's most remote state. Oliver also sent along the robe and boxing shorts worn by Crow in the movie, as well as the actor's hood from Robin Hood, his vest from Les Miserables, and a director's chair with Crow's name on it. Kevin DeMood, general manager of the Blockbuster in Alaska, admits that it would be awesome if Crow were ever to show up at the store, but in the meantime, he'd like to send photos of the display to Crow as a thank you. And as for the most asked question so far, no, he does not know if they washed that jockstrap before sending it, but he would like to think they did. A journalist who once enjoyed 15 minutes of fame for throwing his shoe at President George W. Bush is now running for president in Iraq. He's already considered a shoe-in. In Scotland, a woman is battling a rare disorder that causes her to throw up at least 30 times a day. And that's without the help of Taco Bell or Chipotle. In Tampa, Florida, 37-year-old Scott Stone was arrested after he allegedly splashed a corrosive chemical on two luxury cars, causing more than $3,000 in damage. When asked why he did it, he told detectives the cars reminded him of vehicles driven by people who bullied him in college. Stone now faces two counts of criminal mischief and told detectives that he didn't know who owned the cars. The two cars were a 2017 Porsche Macan and a 2015 Mercedes 500. Ironically, Stone's own car, a 2012 GLK Mercedes, doesn't seem to remind him of the bullies and was spotted at the scene at the time of the attacks. While Roseanne Barr doesn't mind telling the world that she is a Trump supporter, her ex-husband, Tom Arnold, is going to star in an anti-Trump documentary series, The Hunt for the Trump Tapes with Tom Arnold. Wow, that sounds almost as anticlimactic as Geraldo and Al Capone's vault. The Natural History Museum in England has disqualified a participant in its Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition after determining that a photograph he submitted was staged using a stuffed anteater. Well, well, now, how is it the photographer's fault that the anteater overate? A postcard believed to have been sent by infamous serial killer Jack the Ripper has just sold at auction for $30,000. So he was apparently also adept at highway robbery. In Northeast London, around 30 people were injured at a Jewish festival. It seems a bonfire was going, and some of those in attendance were of the opinion that cell phones are evil. Several started throwing their phones into the fire in protest, which was not the best decision. Cell phone batteries have a bad habit of exploding if they are overheated. London ambulance services went to the scene at about 11 p.m. and treated multiple people for burns. Sounds like maybe they were right about cell phones being evil. Elon Musk says he plans to announce the location for a new Tesla SUV factory by the end of the year. The more difficult task will be finding a location for the new Tesla SUV dealership where people could actually afford to buy one. Former Law & Order SVU actress Diane Neal is running for Congress in upstate New York. The celebrity running for political office? That'll never work! 
The owner of a wildlife park in South Africa is recovering from several lacerations and a broken jaw after a lion he once bottle-fed as a cub attacked him. Michael Hodge was investigating a strange smell in the lion's enclosure at the Marikelli Animal Sanctuary, which seemed to be disturbing the animal. As Hodge was leaving the enclosure, the lion raced toward him and dragged him to some nearby bushes as visitors screamed and Hodge yelled for help. Hodge was eventually rescued and airlifted to a hospital in Johannesburg. Tragically, the lion, a large male named Shamba, was killed during the attempt to save Hodge. The family said in a statement that Hodge is only too aware of the dangers of working with wildlife, but they remain his passion, and that the family is devastated by the loss of the 10-year-old lion which they raised from a cub. So here's a quick little pro tip for you. Just because you bottle feed a lion cub doesn't mean that said cub will grow up to be your bestie. Hawaii lawmakers have passed a bill that bans the sale of sunscreens containing chemicals believed to be harmful to coral reefs. So, question, why on earth would anybody be applying sunscreen to coral reefs? According to a study, women who drink moderately are less likely to gain weight. This study has been brought to you by Ernest and Julio Gallo and by the makers of Wine in a Box. The rate of a certain type of brain tumor has doubled over the past two decades, and some researchers are pointing at the use of cell phones as the cause. Although, personally, I blame reality television. The guy in India thought it'd be fun to get a selfie with a bear and was mauled to death. Yeah, he's the only one who didn't see that one coming. Even the bear was like, dude, really? Recent brain research shows that humor hits men and women differently. So stop asking her to pull your finger already. She does not find it funny. She thinks it's gross. Even though, yeah, it, it is kind of funny. In Italy, a lovesick guy stole an ambulance so he could serenade his girlfriend with its siren. Police say he jumped into the ambulance, turned on the siren, and sang romantic love songs to his girlfriend until the neighbors called about the noise. Now, we have really come a long way from boomboxes and Peter Gabriel, haven't we? Scientists predict that 42% of Americans will be obese by the year 2030. For once in my life, I'm ahead of the curve! Yeah! In Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, 64-year-old Don Gorski has eaten 30,000 Big Macs, almost one every day for 46 years. No kidding. Don ate his first Big Mac in 1972 at the same McDonald's where he chowed down his 30,000th one, and he's only missed about eight days in between. And that includes a day in 1982 in which there was a snowstorm that shut down the McDonald's restaurant, as well as the day that his mom died in 1998. Quote, she requested I not eat a Big Mac on the day she died in remembrance of her, unquote, he says. Gorski also notes that he has OCD, which has led him to catalog thousands of receipts, wrappers, and containers over the course of more than four decades. And he does not appear to be suffering for his cause, either. Ellen DeGeneres had his cholesterol checked back in 2003 and came up with 140, and he's run a marathon with Big Mac number 21,387 in hand while he was running. After consuming number 30,000 on the Big Macs, he took one for the road as well and said, maybe I'll be eating it when I catch myself on the news. Who knows? Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling apologized for killing the character Dobby the House Elf in Book 7. You know, I'm not sure how sorry she really is, though. I mean, she gave the apology while rolling around in a giant bed made of money. For her wedding with Prince Harry, Meghan Markle has decided not to have a maid of honor. Nuts. Another dream of mine crushed. The NSA collected over 500 million phone calls last year, triple what it did in 2016. So you can be outraged that the NSA is listening in on even more of your phone calls. Or you can congratulate them for listening in on even more of your phone calls. If you want to be happier, cancel your Facebook account. That's the conclusion from a Danish think tank that insists quitting Facebook will not only make you happier, but also less angry, less sad, and less worried. The Happiness Research Institute in Copenhagen, Denmark, found that after only seven days away from Facebook, those users reported feeling happier, less sad, less worried, less angry, and less depressed. 
For more information, you can read this entire article on my Facebook page. Scientists just named a newly discovered beetle after Leonardo DiCaprio. Interesting that in the short amount of time since it was discovered, the beetle has already slept with three of its co-beetles. In Oregon, a horse is suing its owner for $100,000, seeking damages for neglect. It's actually the Animal Legal Defense Fund bringing the lawsuit on behalf of the horse, so not as strange as it sounds from the headline. Ironically, the name of the horse is Justice. The lawsuit is taking a long time, though. When asked how much money the horse was suing for, the horse had to knock on the ground with its hoof a hundred thousand times. Keep listening, I have a lot more weird news coming. You know, twice a year, I take one week and ask you to join me in saving lives. Well, this week, you can save a child's life in Haiti or Guatemala for a single gift of just $50. That one-time gift of $50 through Food for the Poor will provide a full year of food and clean water for life for that child as it gives them the resources to filter the water for drinking. And if you'd like to do more, well, a one-time gift of $250 will provide the same for an entire family of five. I've supported Food for the Poor for several years now because I believe in what they do, and I hope you will too. You can give online by clicking the Give Life banner at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com or click the link in the show notes. If you'd rather give by phone, you can call 855-901-4673. That's 855-901-HOPE. Or on your mobile phone, you can dial pound 250 and say the keyword HOPE. Please make that one-time gift of $50 or $250 this week and bring them food, clean water, and, most of all, hope and life. A New Jersey farm has come out with ham-flavored ice cream, which I think means mustard is now a legitimate ice cream topping. What another reason not to drive while tired? Well, according to a survey by AAA in Washington, D.C., nine out of ten police officers have thought a driver was drunk when really the motorist was overtired. So officers will now ask if you've been drinking or if you need a nappy poo. In Aurora, Colorado, police ticketed 26-year-old Angelique Sanchez for allegedly damaging a 7-Eleven microwave by heating up urine inside it, which caused the urine to explode. Apparently, Sanchez thought microwaved urine would help her pass a drug test for a future job she was applying for. The police report shows the 7-Eleven clerk called police after hearing a loud bang a few seconds after Sanchez placed something in the microwave. The clerk told police Sanchez looked at the microwave and walked out the door, and the clerk noticed yellow liquid dripping from the microwave and the smell was unquestionably urine. A background check revealed Sanchez has been arrested several times and convicted of theft, and now I would think also charged with urinating in public. Facebook is coming out with their own dating service. Because apparently they felt all of your information that's already been compromised wasn't enough. Meghan Markle's estranged half-brother has written an extraordinary open letter to Prince Harry in which he urges the groom-to-be to call off the royal wedding. Because the one person in the world you know that you're going to get an unbiased opinion from is somebody described as estranged half-brother. 7-Eleven has announced they're going to be offering healthier options for their customers. Because what the world needs now is a kale slurpee. English teachers are shaking their heads in dismay. Only 43% of U.S. adults read at least one work of literature in the last year. That is, novels, short stories, poetries, or plays, marking a three-decade low according to a report from the National Endowment for the Arts. It is the long, steady decline of literary reading, laments the Washington Post. The NEA has been tracking adult reading and arts participation since 1982, when the literature reading rate was an impressive 57 percent. The survey counts only those books read for pleasure, not because they were required for work or school. In an attempt to capture the broadest possible range of leisure reading, there was also no distinction made between physical books and books read on e-readers, such as the Amazon Kindle. You know, we do read tweets, though. I mean, and you spend a lot of time on Instagram. Yeah, how about you create pretty pictures of war and peace and then send out the entire novel, 280 characters at a time? We might read it. Speaking of Twitter, they say that 350 million passwords were stolen, so if you've not changed your password lately, now would be a good time. 
Instead of a password of 12345, you might want to change that to 54321 because nobody will ever figure that out. Vice President Mike Pence said there is a lot of prayer in this White House. Hey, what a coincidence! We're uh, staying pretty busy praying out here too, Mike, because of what's going on in there. A study finds that people who use AOL email give the most money to political campaigns because apparently they have a lot of disposable income from not spending money on anything other than dial-up. I mean, seriously, who uses AOL email anymore? President Trump is going to appoint Patriots coach Bill Belichick to his sports council. Oh, well, well, wait, wait, really? The president of the United States has a sports council? Okay, go ahead. Tell me government is not too big and overly invasive in our lives. We're paying for a sports council. Scientists in Singapore created a robot that can put together an IKEA chair in roughly 20 minutes. The goal is to have the job completed in just 10 minutes, but they've not been able to figure out how to stop the robot from angrily tossing assembly pieces across the room and having parts left over. A British teenager struggling with an essay on an Ian McEwan book didn't get a really good grade, even though he got help from the author himself, who happened to be his dad. The award-winning British author says he feels a little dubious about his books being studied in school. His son Greg had to read McEwan's novel Enduring Love as homework. Mr. McEwan said, I confess, I did give him a tutorial and told him what he should consider. I didn't read his essay, but it turned out his teacher disagreed fundamentally with what he said. The teacher gave Greg a C plus for the essay. Whew, ouch. In Mobile, Alabama, a 13-year-old who had been declared brain dead woke up shortly after his parents signed organ donation papers. Some people just refuse to share with others. A study suggests that some birth control pills can lower a woman's free testosterone level. But on the positive side, low testosterone means fewer incidents of things like lady mustaches. Shout out to my late Aunt Agnes! Hey! Conan O'Brien is cutting back his talk show to just half an hour each night. It's a direct response to him only being half as funny as he used to be. A 92-year-old woman in the UK sought help for an addiction. Booze? Nope. Cats? Nuh-uh. The great-grandmother told her doctor she is addicted to email. She told her doctor that she is so addicted she will sometimes check her email's inbox six times a day. Six! Yeah, get her into rehab! Idaho State University has got a real problem on their hands. They've admitted to misplacing a gram of weapons-style plutonium, and federal authorities want to fine them $8,500. The university has not been able to account for the bit of radioactive material since 2003, but nonetheless believes it was properly stored at a licensed disposal facility. However, with no documented proof, the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission said it must propose the fine. You know, the first place I'd look for plutonium is the house of that weird scientist guy who built a shoddy look-alike bomb using used pinball machine parts. One in three employees admits they have been to work with a hangover. The other two develop their hangover while at work. John McCain has let it be known that he wants Vice President Mike Pence to attend his funeral, but not President Trump. Old age it can make people cantankerous. Keep listening, I've got more weird news coming up. This week, I'm asking you to join me in saving a child's life in Haiti or Guatemala for a single gift of just $50. That one-time gift of $50 through Food for the Poor, it provides a full year of food and clean water for life for that child. It gives them the resources to filter the water for drinking. If you'd like to do more, a one-time gift of $250 will provide that same for an entire family of five. I've supported Food for the Poor for several years now because I believe in what they do, and I hope you will now as well. You can give online by clicking the Give Life banner at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com or click the link in the show notes. And if you'd rather give by phone, you can call 855-901-4673. That's 855-901-HOPE. Or on your mobile phone, you can dial pound 250 and say the keyword HOPE. Please make that one-time gift of $50 or $250 right now. Bring them food, clean water, and most of all, hope for life. Mitt Romney says his favorite meat is a hot dog. I'm assuming his favorite fruit is roll-ups. 
President Trump's ex-wife Ivana made an appearance over the weekend on Italy's version of Dancing with the Stars. She credits her incredible dancing skills on watching her ex-husband Donald dancing around questions from reporters. Vladimir Putin was sworn in for his fourth term as president of Russia on Monday. He's scheduled to win his fourth election later this year. Disgraced televangelist Jim Baker is back at it. Now he's selling cabins in Missouri that he calls safe from the apocalypse. And if you act now, he'll also send you a holy welcome mat for that cabin, soaked overnight in holy water and personally blessed by Jim Baker himself. Hallelujah! In Franklin, Indiana, Barry K. Ridge has been arrested for driving his riding lawnmower while drunk. Apparently believing the old adage that if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, Mr. Ridge gave it another go on Saturday, so once again was arrested by the Johnson County Sheriff's Office. The sheriff's deputy was sent to a Franklin home around 5.15 p.m. after a caller said a man wearing a neon green shirt riding a red lawnmower pulled into his yard and began to mow his grass. It was Mr. Ridge, and the officer said his eyes appeared glassy. According to the police report, Ridge's breath test at the Johnson County Jail registered .165. The legal limit in Indiana is .08. Ridge is already awaiting trial on a DWI arrest from April 8, 2018, where he was reportedly on his lawnmower in a Kroger parking lot causing a disturbance. Sounds like somebody needs to have their driver's license taken away and have his mowing privileges revoked. According to research from Mount Sinai, St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital, New York, those who have a higher sense of purpose in life and believe their lives are useful appear to live longer. Although it is not clear why, believing there's a reason that you're here on Earth lowers your risk of death and your risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Fortunately, I was able to identify my reason for being on Earth a long time ago. Netflix and Cheetos. Fitbit is adding menstrual cycle tracking in its smartwatch app. Looks like I need to get that app. Yeah, I mean, with a description like menstrual, it must be great for men. Michelle Obama has said again that she will not be running for any office in 2020. She's denying it like every other day, so obviously she is planning a run for the White House in 2020. A 15-year-old girl in England was left with horrific burns after deodorant was sprayed on her arm in the latest dumb challenge. This challenge involves spraying aerosol deodorant onto a person's bare skin for as long as they can stand it, which ends up giving the person frostbite. The spray deodorant left the girl with a nasty wound on her forearm where doctors had to perform a skin graft. But her arm did smell powder blue fresh. A couple married last weekend in Africa just days after the bride was attacked by a crocodile that ripped off her arm. The pair was canoeing in the upper Zambezi River when an eight-foot croc leapt out of the water, grabbing the bride-to-be and dragging her into the water, ripping off her right arm during the attack. Well, at least the wedding ring is traditionally worn on the left hand, you so it all worked out. iPhone is often considered a luxury product since budget-minded consumers generally buy cheaper Android devices. However, 82% of U.S. teens now own iPhones. So I guess we can congratulate Donald Trump on the improved economy. A new study finds that tourism is worse for the environment than anyone thought. It's been discovered that various species of wildlife suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder from the daily exposure of having to see out-of-shape tourists in bathing suits. In St. Petersburg, Florida, police arrested 57-year-old Jennifer Sue Roberts for calling 911 not once, but twice, claiming she had a medical emergency. Roberts reportedly appeared intoxicated when paramedics arrived after the second call. Turns out her medical emergency was just that she wanted beer. Pinellas County Sheriff's Office records indicate Roberts, who also reportedly goes by Jennifer Sue Sunday, has been accused of dialing 911 without an emergency on 28 different occasions. You know, if you consider being out of alcohol an emergency, it might be time to dial back the libations a bit. 22-year-old man set a record for solving a Rubik's Cube in just 4.22 seconds, the same exact amount of time it takes me to lose my car keys. Facebook is said to be looking at producing their own TV series. It'll be similar to the comedy TV show Friends, but none of the characters actually know each other. Photos seem to indicate that Hillary Clinton has been wearing a back brace. Either that or she forgot to take the hanger out of her pantsuit. 
What is decision fatigue and how do you work around it? Psychological research suggests that the least productive time of the day is the mid-afternoon, right around 3 p.m. Conversely, the most productive time to work is within the first two hours after you wake up. Because, just like your body, your brain gets tired. Psychologists call it decision fatigue. Making decisions uses the very same willpower that you use to say no to donuts or drugs, says psychologist Roy F. Baumeister. When you make a decision or avoid a temptation, you're using up the supply of mental energy you have for the day, in the same way you can only lift a weight so many times before your muscles give up on you. For this reason, leaders like Barack Obama and Mark Zuckerberg wear the same thing to work every day, since it removes their need to make a decision about how they're going to dress. Are you, okay, yeah, but let's be honest here. If you're getting decision fatigue from pulling clothes out of the closet, you might need a psychologist for more than just decision fatigue. Tuesday was free cone day at haagen -Dazs. I was asked not to let you know, though, until now. In Keanu Reeves' news, John Wick 3 is already filming, which is something many people want to see. In the meantime, Bill & Ted's Excellent Adventure 3 is signed and going to happen, which is something many people don't want to see. Keep listening, more weird news is on the way. This week, you can save a child's life in Haiti or Guatemala for a single gift of just $50. That one-time gift of $50 through Food for the Poor will provide a full year of food and clean water for life for that child. It gives them the resources to filter the water for drinking. If you'd like to do more, well, a one-time gift of $250 will provide the same for an entire family of five in Haiti and Guatemala. I have supported Food for the Poor for several years now. I do it on a monthly basis, in fact, because I believe in what they do. And I hope that you will become believers, too. You can give online by clicking the Give Life banner at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com or click the link in the show notes. And if you'd rather give by phone, you can call 855-901-4673. That's 855-901-HOPE. Or on your mobile phone, you can dial pound 250 and say the keyword HOPE. But please, make that one-time gift of $50 during this one-week campaign. Bring them food, clean water, and most of all, bring them hope and life. Comcast is going to make an offer to buy Fox. They said they would be by to make the official offer sometime between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. In Northern Ireland, Brenda McLaughlin sustained a circular hole in her skull when she was at a nightclub and attacked by a 17-year-old male assailant armed with a power drill. The teen assailant was arrested and stands accused of unlawfully and maliciously causing grievous bodily harm to Miss McLaughlin and is further accused of stealing the power drill that belonged to the nightclub where all of this went down. Police were called by witnesses who reported a woman lying injured on the ground with blood coming from her head and lapsing in and out of consciousness. Thankfully, there does not appear to have been any brain damage. On Brenda, that is. The teenaged attacker most definitely had brain damage even before he got to the club. California is working on a plan to tax space travel by the mile. Leave it to a bunch of space cases to try and tax something they don't own. How do you how do you tax space? Something that's not only not in your state, it's not even on your planet. New research says that the average American works two more hours a day than the peasant of medieval times. Plus, we still complain about being underpaid. Adele celebrated her 30th birthday over the weekend with a Titanic-themed party. You know, as hard as it is to keep a music career afloat, why theme a party around something known for sinking? In Gulfport, Mississippi, 32-year-old Shawn Michael Stroud has been accused of stealing a John Deere front-end loader, then using it to ram trailers and vehicles in a Walmart parking lot. Why'd he do it? Stroud told police he thought it was the end of the world and zombies were chasing him. Stroud is accused of hitting two occupied vehicles, several utility trailers, and three unoccupied vehicles. Gulfport police say they had to put down spike strips to stop Stroud in the nearby parking lot of a Nissan dealership after he fled in the front end loader. At the police station, court records say officers read Stroud his rights. He then told them about the zombies. All right, so now where are the priorities of law enforcement nowadays? Why are police wasting their time arresting this guy? They should be out trying to stop the zombies. 
Four women have stepped forward to accuse New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman of physical violence that was not consensual. As if there is such a thing as consensual physical violence that doesn't indicate the need for therapy. Bill Clinton has written a presidential thriller with best-selling crime writer James Patterson. The President is Missing will be released next month, and it's being billed as a unique amalgam of intrigue, suspense, and behind-the-scenes global drama from the highest corridors of power. And who better to write a crime thriller about a president than a president who's been accused of so many crimes? George Zimmerman has been charged with a misdemeanor for allegedly stalking a private investigator. Isn't that the private investigator's job? Taylor Swift has had Ticketmaster turn off their resale option for her concerts to make it appear that more tickets have been sold. She's not selling out for real, though. I mean, she's still a sellout, but she's not selling out. Uh, you don't, I don't know. I don't listen to her music. Lane Crawford has been reportedly fired from the TV show Lethal Weapon, and Fox is going to need a new Martin Riggs. You know, I do hear Mel Gibson might be looking for work. In Marathon, Florida, 46-year-old Guillermo Herrada Olivia was arrested for stabbing 34-year-old Inel Morales in the thigh with a Dexter knife while drinking at a friend's home. Morales told deputies he was drinking beer with several friends when he went into the house to grab another one and use the restroom. Herrada Olivia followed him into the kitchen and armed himself with the fillet knife and stabbed Morales, according to police. A drunken Harada Olivia turned himself in to police about two hours later, telling deputies that he used a fillet knife to open a beer and Morales got stabbed. And not only that, but then he tried to use a can opener to clean the fish for that night's dinner. Katy Perry sent an olive branch and a sweet letter to Taylor Swift as Taylor launched her new tour. Apparently, their bad blood is now behind them. At least until they begin to feel irrelevant and need something to garner press again. There's a report that NASA has invented an age-reversing pill they would give to astronauts traveling to Mars. Mars? How about taking care of Earth first? I mean, seriously, who would not immediately sign up for a prescription to age-reversing pills? A Canadian zoo is in a bit of trouble after a bear was taken out for ice cream at a local Dairy Queen. Discovery Wildlife Park in Alberta faces two charges for failing to notify officials the bear was leaving the zoo. One-year-old Berkeley was taken through the drive through Dairy Queen in a pickup truck and hand-fed ice cream through the vehicle's window. It was really cute until the bear got angry because they wouldn't give her any more candy sprinkles. Ticketmaster says that they could one day replace tickets with facial recognition, meaning all us ugly people will likely be shoved to the back of the arena. Page 6 of the New York Post reports that Donald Trump Jr. is moving on from his soon-to-be ex-wife and spending time with Kimberly Guilfoyle of Fox News. It's actually a pretty good fit, if you ask me. I mean, she's a lawyer, and the Trumps always seem to be in need of one, including Donald Trump Jr. right now. A USA Today analysis of federal energy records found that about once every four days, part of the nation's power grid is struck by a cyber or physical attack. This news brought to you by the good folks at Generators R Us. A man nicknamed Captain Jack Sparrow was arrested in Knoxville for huffing glue and resisting arrest. Huffing glue? What, was the Black Pearl fresh out of rum? You know, come to think of it, how did you sail your pirate ship into landlocked Knoxville, Tennessee to begin with? Following President Trump's decision this week to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal, Iran's supreme leader said of Trump, "...this man will turn to dust and his body will become food for snakes and ants." Well, duh. Uh, of course, we all die eventually and become worm food. Thanks for the update there, Captain Obvious. A pair of twins were born in Utah on May 4th, Star Wars Day, and they were named Rowan Luke and Kai Leia after the movie's characters. Their parents better enroll them in self-defense courses before they hit grade school. That's all I'm saying. A recent study shows the people who like charities on Facebook are less likely to donate to them. Whoa, you mean, you mean people are sometimes untruthful on social media? Sky News is planning to ID celebrities at the upcoming royal wedding using AI. All right, so let me get this straight. You did not invite Donald Trump or Sarah Ferguson to the wedding, but you did invite the Terminator? 
A Massachusetts state trooper rescued a dog running loose on the interstate by luring it with homemade jerky. Be careful, that's also how they get last-minute people for jury duty. In Florida, a woman in an old white sedan pulled up to the drive through window at a fast-food restaurant. When the employee asked her what she wanted, the woman said she had a gun and wanted money. The employee asked her how much she wanted, and the woman replied, $50. The employee told her to get lost and then closed the window. The woman drove away with nothing. Wait, wait, was there a correct amount to ask for for an armed robbery? The latest survey of teens and tech shows nearly 8 in 10, 78 percent, have a cell phone, and almost half of those, 48 percent, own smartphones. The 2 in 10 kids who don't have a cell phone probably couldn't reach it anyway because they're always stuffed in their locker. A Picasso nude painting, Young Girl with a Flower Basket, sold at an auction Tuesday for $115 million. Imagine how much it might have sold for if he decided to paint her some clothes. April was the coldest it's been in 20 years across the U.S., especially between Donald and Melania after the stormy stuff. Poland now has a Hershey Highway, quite literally. Thanks to an overturned semi-truck near Slepka, tons of liquid milk chocolate covered a six-lane highway, and the stuff hardened, blocking traffic and creating a nightmare for cleanup crews. The chocolate gushed across all six lanes on the A2, which connects Poznan to Warsaw, blocking traffic in both directions. Videos posted to Twitter show excavators scooping the soppy, sticky mess from the highway as traffic builds up. Meanwhile, the truck lies on its side in the median. The driver's okay, suffering only a broken arm. Nobody else was hurt. Although they are expecting the highway will soon need some repair work using strong acne medication. A study says some millennials are turned off by sex, with one in eight still virgins at the age of 26. In their defense, though, it is kind of hard to meet people playing video games and living in your parents' basement. A new study shows that our brains need rebooting. The study published in a recent edition of the journal Science found that a plumbing network in the brains of mice flushes out cellular waste while sleeping. The study officials found that several important housekeeping functions take place while sleeping. In case you didn't catch that, whenever you go to sleep, you get brainwashed. Rose McGowan says she's leaving the Hollywood bubble behind. She's giving up acting and becoming a full-time activist. It's never the people you really want to see less of that make these kind of decisions, is it? I mean, tell me Michael Bay is quitting Hollywood? That'll make my day. Today's Daily Dose of Weird News is brought to you by Send Out Cards. You can mail a real, personalized greeting card without leaving the house or going out to buy stamps. Choose from the hundreds of existing cards on the website or create one of your own completely from scratch using your own photos and message. And you can even use your own handwriting and signature if you wish. You create it all digitally on the website before it goes to the post office to get mailed. And for an extra special touch, you can even add a gift to the card, like a stuffed animal, bakery items, or candy. You can try it now absolutely free by visiting sendoutcards.com slash weird. That's sendoutcards.com slash weird. For Daily Dose of Weird News, I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos.